uh, would like to speak about Redis Graph. You know, about a year ago, we presented the Redis Graph here at Redis Conf. And this was such an uh, initial experience that we wanted to see how much you can do with Redis modules. And we released it as an open source, and we see so many feedbacks, most of them good feedbacks, so we decided to continue developing it. But we said, let's develop it if it really solves real problems. For those of you who are familiar with graph database, there are two main real problems. First is the speed, especially if the graph is large, especially if you want to do queries on mass insertions. And the second one is how you can really scale the graph across multiple nodes. And we decided to see if we can challenge this. And today, I would like to introduce our new engine for Redis Graph, which is based on Graph Blast technology. And for that, I would like to invite to the stage Professor Tim Davis from Texas A&M University, the man behind the Graph Blast technology, and Roy Lipman, the man behind the Redis Graph modules. Roy, Tim. Thank you very much. I'd like to talk to you a little bit briefly about GraphBlas. GraphBlas is based on the idea that there's a very fundamental deep connection between graph algorithms and matrix algebra, specifically matrix algebra on semi-rings and sparse matrix computations. This is an effort, the observation mathematically has gone back a long time. About 10 years ago, a discussion started off in the community over how to make this real. Five years ago, they decided to create an, an API and start polishing that. A year ago, they finished it and asked me to write the code. I did, and now it's in various Linux distros and, and being used. This is a community effort, academics, government labs, Lincoln, MIT Lincoln Lab, uh, Intel, IBM are all working on this together. And uh, the key observation is that these matrix computations, if you just take a graph algorithm and and uh, map it over to matrix computation and change the operators, you have a very similar, similar structure. So as an example, finding the next level in a breadth-first search. You can do this conventionally by walking across the edges one at a time and uh, finding the nodes from one and three. You find your neighbors two, four, and six. And oh, by the way, we can't do node four because I've seen that already. Uh, that is a node one at a time edge, one at a time node operation that gives very little scope for the, a library to come in and optimize things. On the other hand, this can be expressed very elegantly and beautifully with just a single matrix vector multiply on a different semi-ring, the Boolean semi-ring, where you replace the multiply and add with uh, logical or and logical and. And so here, for example, columns one and three are the columns of the adjacency matrix. You want to know who their neighbors are. That's a matrix vector multiplication with this one vector to get the nodes 2, uh, 4, and 6 in the, in the red column. Oh, but 4 needs to be excluded. That turns into a, a mask operation. It's like, like a bulk if statement, which very many al graph algorithms have that kind of if inside their, their, their loop. So why graph plus? As I've shown you, tra trans uh, traversing a node and an edge at a time uh, doesn't give much scope for the library to optimize. Uh, instead, we can take linear algebra ideas and give this bulk operation to a library. It gives me lots of power, expressive, expressiveness, and composability, and associated distributed laws, and A, B transpose equals B transpose, A transpose. All this beautiful linear algebra can now be done with graph algebra. And uh, now I have scope for doing things like lazy evaluation. I can bulk up these operations and do them all in a group, and it becomes much more efficient and, and very, very powerful, and thus you end up with uh, high-performance graph algorithms in the language of linear algebra over semi-rings. You don't lose any of the time complexity. This is not n squared, n cubed operations. Uh, and you get very powerful and very expressive code and very easy to write at the user level. The user does not have to write walking across nodes and edges. You can just write your beautiful linear algebra, and you get cool graph algorithms. Roy. Thank you, Tim. So for the uh, past couple of months, we've been working on replacing Redis graph internals with sparse adjacency matrices. And once that was done, read the request for querying the graph 
and write request for populating the graph were simply translated into matrix operations. So for example, uh, if I wanted to connect two nodes with an edge, that would simply translate into setting a single entry within a matrix. Graph traversal and filtering is done by matrix multiplication and addition. And so we've conducted a number of benchmarks. The first one deals with inserting or importing a large data set into your graph database. And this preliminary step can become quite a hurdle. We wanted to make sure that the new version of Redis Graph can deal with bulk inserts really fast. And so we're able to import a node with over 1 million nodes and 3 million edges within half a second, which is at least 46 times faster than any other graph database we've tested against. The second uh, benchmark that we've performed deals with graph querying, specifically finding all neighbor nodes for every single node in the graph we've just imported. And we were able to do that in 50 milliseconds, which is at least 90 times faster than any graph database that we've tested against. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Tim. I think it is extremely, extremely impressive. And just think what else you can do with that. You can tomorrow implement Redis Graph on the top of Graph Blast running on GPU and have another one or two order of magnitude to the performance. So instead of several seconds, you can do that with less than one millisecond. You can also think about how you can distribute these metrics across multiple nodes and use the power of linear algebra to query the graph in a real distributed manner. So a more detailed discussion about this will be uh, today at 1 a.m., 1 p.m., sorry, at uh, Lombard, where uh, Tim and Roy will uh, detail the, all the theory behind the graph plus and the Redis graph. So the next section will be dedicated to Redis search. Uh, we introduced Redis search about two years ago, and it was received very well by the community and both by customers. So we have many adoptions uh, of the community edition as well as some large customers running this uh, in production, uh, you know, enterprise customers. Uh, we, for the last year, we worked very hard to enhance uh, Redis Search, and today I'm very proud to announce what we call the distribution, distributed aggregation engine for Redis Search. And to tell us all about it, I would like to invite Dreer Volk to the stage. Please, Dreer. Thank you. Hello. So, about two years ago, uh, we started working on Redis Search. And initially, we focused on it being a high-performance search engine. Um, we've implemented it uh, as a Redis module. It was basically one of the first uh, demos of uh, how to write a module. Um, and uh, over the years, we've enhanced it to be um, both like a generic uh, secondary index for Redis and the text search engine. Uh, we've started offering a commercial distributed version of it uh, over Redis Labs Enterprise Cluster. Um, currently, the, the largest commercial cluster we have is uh, 200 shards and uh, 2 billion documents, and uh, uh, it works. <laughs> um, and pretty fast, I, I, I think. Um, so um, what we've added lately, and we've released just yesterday, is uh, Redis Search aggregations. Now, aggregations, when we talk about search, we basically want to find a small subset of documents that um, you know, uh, answer some query that we have, right? Uh, but with aggregations, we say, OK, let's take those records, or like a, no a large number of records, maybe all the records, and process them, we already have a very fast search engine and a very fast data access inside Redis. Why don't we add the ability to process them and extract uh, some statistical insights from them? So how do we do that? 
uh, we basically uh, build a pipeline. So uh, we start uh, with, uh, with the search results uh, and we want to extract the insights. So we build a dynamic pipeline that you can just build by a query syntax that I'll show you in a bit. Uh, and we apply uh, grouping. So we take the results, we group them into separate groups, and then we apply uh, uh, transformations on them uh, and reduce them. Like redu by reduce, I mean we take a bazillion uh, results matching one group and then flatten them into one saying, okay, there were just like bazillion results in this group and this is what we're interested in because we're reducing it by counting them. Uh, and we can apply the transformation and we can sort it and we can, um, uh, in a recursive and reentrant way, we can just repeat those, uh, repeat those operations. You can sort and apply and sort and group and group and apply and build, your, build the pipeline that you're interested in to extract the, the insights that you want. Uh, so, for example, I can filter by Redis, group the results by month, count every month, then I can format the date, and I'll show you the syntax in just a bit. Um, so, again, the operations we can count, count distinct, min, max, statistical stuff, um, st standard mathematical uh, functions, date conversion, string manipulation, uh, and really, you know, it. already the, the start, we have a pretty rich uh, feature set for aggregations. Uh, another problem that we had to deal with is what happens when, like this is very simple, not simple, but you know, it's, uh, it's doable on a single node, but what happens if you're running on a cluster, right? Uh, you, you can't repeat those operations in all the nodes, you can't do any sort of cross-node operations, so uh, we went for this architecture. We have the, the client sending a query, let's say count something, and then we have a coordinator that distributes and pushes down uh, some of the work as much as we can uh, to all the nodes in the cluster. And the coordinator, by the way, is just an ordinary node in the cluster. It can act uh, with either role. Um, and then it, it basically takes the original query, splits that. We have a query translator that splits that query into two queries, the remote query and the local query. And so basically, we take one query, turn it into two di other different queries, and just basically uh, return the results. So in the case of counting, uh, the actual nodes will count the items in each group, and then you have the coordinator node summing up the counts, uh, so we compile that. Um, so uh, this is available on the enterprise version, and now if you can switch to my screen, I'll show you a short demo of it. Um, can you see it? All right. So this is the API. Can you see the font? Maybe a bit bigger. So the query is ft.aggregate. And in this case, uh, my index is, uh, is called IDX. What I have here is uh, a full set of all the Stack Overflow questions since day one. And let's count them by month in this query. So uh, the actual search query is just star, meaning just scan everything. There is no indexing going on in here. In here. Like everything you're going to see is full processing of all the 15 million records. Um, we have the timestamp, we have the tags and everything. So uh, first we need to round the timestamp by a month. So we say apply month, that's a time function, uh, and we name that as month, apply month over time. Then we group by the month. The one here means, uh, because Redis doesn't have parentheses in the protocol, so the one here means following group by is one argument. Uh, we reduce it by counting each group. Zero again means there's no arguments for counting. And then we sort it by month. Uh, and just for good measure, we apply time formatting on the month so you can actually see it. And let's execute that. Uh, this is a single AWS instance split into a 15 shard cluster. Uh, so you can see that it took like, uh, it takes about 300 milliseconds. And this is the, these are the results. Um, and we can, this is a very nice tool called Redash. And we can create a visualization of it. So uh, let's make it a bar chart. The X column is month. The Y column is count. And immediately you can see, uh, the, you can see the, the graph of all Stack Overflow questions uh, by month uh, that was done in real time. Um, I have another uh, demo here. Uh, we can follow a couple, of, again, we are a search engine. Let's compare uh, two tags. So again, I'm searching for tags, Redis, or Memcache. 
uh, applying month as a month. This is another function called match terms. For each, Redis, for each record, it extracts why is it here. It could be because it's Redis, Memcache, or both. Then we group by the month and the term. Uh, and count uh, and uh, sort by the month in the term and again apply the time formatting. This is way faster because we're not scanning all of Stack Overflow. This is just two tags. Uh, and then if we create a visualization, uh, let's uh, group it by uh, the term. And now you can see, uh, you can see that actually around mid uh, 20, uh, like yeah, early mid 2011, Redis surpassed Memcache. Uh, uh, over the over this uh, in Stack Overflow questions, of course we can also add whatever we want here. You know this is uh, let's compare Java and Python, um, and again uh, you can see that Python yeah is dethroned uh, Java about a year ago. Uh, so again, uh, this is available uh, on the open source version for a single shard, the enterprise version uh, distributed. This has been the distributed version. And also do try Redash, it's a very cool tool. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dvir. And for those who want to hear more about this, uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m., probably the last session in the conference at uh, 8, um, Dvir will explain that. I would like to do the final uh, stage of this uh, session about how you can ultra-scale Redis. So let, let me go through some steps that you need to do in order to make it really linearly scalability, linear scalability. First, you need to make sure that between your application and the Redis server, there is only one op. Don't put any load balancers there. And please use the cluster API so that you can access directly to the shards that lives in the node where the data is. Second, you should have a way, I'll explain how, um, to run Redis on all the cores of the nodes. And the third, make sure that the inter-node communication and the inter-Redis communication is as minimum as possible to make it a pure share nothing architecture. So if we look what runs at the, in the, inside the Redis enterprise, we actually did that by representing a single big Redis with a zero latency proxy, which is built on multi-threaded and a bunch of uh, Redis instances that runs behind it. And this proxy doesn't add ops because what it does, it's actually, it's um, create multiple techniques in order to accelerate Redis. So it's create persistent connection between the proxy and the Redis. It doesn't run TCP, it runs socket connections. And on the top of this, it's multiplex requests that are coming from multiple client to a very few connections between the, the proxy and the server. So the end results, if you run it, it's about two times faster. Now, with this architecture, we practically create linear scalability because it's a single network hop, multi-core, and it's shared nothing architecture. Now, in order to see it in a live situation, I would like to um, invite David Mayer to the stage. David. Um, David conducted a very interesting demo. Uh, this, is, this is going to be a recorded demo because it requires uh, launching something like 50 AWS instances. It never works on, on keynotes. So sorry for that. <laughs> Go ahead, guys. Play the demo. OK, our, what you can see here is that we basically use 26 nodes, or our 26 node cluster. And uh, we used 512 Redis master shards, basically. Now, or here you see that I'm spinning up some client machines, and now, let's see, right? It's going up, 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 and finally reach something about 50 million operations per second. And uh, as soon as all the clients are basically are doing what they should do, you can see we are around one millisecond latency in average, or a little bit below that, so actually are sub-milliseconds. Okay. As you can see here, we did not just do this with 26 nodes. We, we actually started with three nodes by reaching something like 5 million operations per second, and, and then we increased it step by step by ending up with something like 26 nodes for about 50 million operations per second. So you can actually see that it scales very linearly, right? So yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Uh, very impressive. And if you want to learn more, 
Uh, there is a, a dedicated session for that today at 3 p.m. at Fillmore with David and Anna. Uh, 